AB is different than the rest of the therapies available for children with autism? ABA is a scientific approach to teaching. Um, it's been developed um, through many, many years uh, and improved through research to um, really look at how we learn and what we can do to the environment around a child to help them to develop better learning potential and better learning skills. Uh, how that differs from a lot of the other um, uh, options available for, for children with autism is that um, it's not, a, it's not a, a simple someone's idea. Oh, I, I think that this would work. I, I think you should do this this way. It's not what we call cookie cutter. There's no specific, you do this and things will be fine. What it is, is it's really an understanding of why we interact and an application of that understanding to issues that really affect individual children. Uh, I don't want to specifically talk bad about any other specific therapies. Uh, I just want to say that having studied many of them, um, I always found what I was learning from them to have good ideas and good useful parts to them, but they were always things that were kind of tricks in my bag of tricks, little tools that I could use. And what ABA gave me was this guideline, this, this overriding idea of how to better interact. And when I can better interact, I can address any issue. If I know the principles of behavior, you can come to me with any question and I can look back at my principles and I can decide what it is that I can do to help address that specific behavior. That's different than a lot of therapies. And another major difference is just the, the scientific support behind it. Um, this is a scientifically validated approach. There has been thousands and thousands of research studies that cover large group designs and even individual group designs that cover specific learning skills, procedures, and principles. And they all demonstrate the effectiveness of ABA. A lot of other therapies, in fact, most of the other therapies can't say that. And uh, why do you think it's not so popular in Europe? Uh, I think there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one, the majority of the progress that's been made has been made in the English language. Um, two, the early stages of ABA um, were touted um, when uh, B.F. Skinner first started taking the principles of ABA and putting them together. Um, he was uh, you know, given lots of, of credit for having, you know, talked about this and, and brought it together. However, our understanding at the time of how to really apply those principles was really rudimentary. It was really basic. And because of that, there was so much that was being done in the name of ABA that was inappropriate and that wasn't, wasn't useful and that wasn't really helping children to become better adults or better independent beings. It was just teaching them individual skills. Um, so a lot of people who got on the bandwagon of trying ABA back even in like the early 60s and 70s when Dr. Lovas was really traveling around Europe telling people about it, people were trying it and they were following it and they were realizing that it was limited. And what happened in Europe was with a large population of psychology really focusing in on the Freudian aspects and, and cognitive behaviorism and those sort of things, um, they considered, very quickly considered ABA to be a failed experiment and just put it aside and it was forgotten about. However, that's not the case in the U.S. In the U.S. and in Canada and England and other English-speaking countries, they continue to develop the science, they continue to improve the procedures around it, and they started to discover all the areas in which they had gone wrong in teaching individual children. And it isn't it wasn't that the principles themselves were wrong, that the, the, the idea of behaviorism was wrong. All of those things proved themselves to be correct. It was our inability to manipulate those principles uh, appropriately enough and comprehensively enough that really cut off the use of ABA in Europe and other parts of the world. Luckily, through things like um, in, 19, in the early 1990s, um, Catherine Maurice uh, wrote a book about her two children having done ABA programs and had come to the point where they no longer were diagnosable as autistic. Um, and when people started to read this, there started to be a bigger interest again in ABA. And from 1990 on, you saw more and more people getting involved, more and more universities taking ABA back on, more research being done, um, and ultimately the process got better and better and better. And now it's gotten to the point where the, the U.S. Surgeon General in, actually, in 1999, in the Surgeon General's report, uh, stated that 
for long-term effects, benefits, that ABA is the only um, therapy that has 30 years or more of scientific evidence that backs up its support. Sensory integration and PECs and TEACH and all of these other possibilities, uh, play therapies, they all have good things about them, but they don't have this, the, the level of scientific support backing them that ABA does. And if you have limited amounts of dollars and limited amounts of time, you want to be able to apply that money and that, af and that effort towards things that you believe have a good chance of being successful. And ABA, through the scientific evidence, shows that it's one of your best options, if not the best option. And um, what led you to involve the parents to that degree? That well, there's been a lot of studies um, recently in the last five to ten years that have shown um, that parental involvement in their ABA programming and therapy are one of the, the largest indicators to whether the, 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 the type of success that a child will have. The greater the parental involvement, the greater the success. Another main issue is that therapy for years has been done in a way that is almost impossible to be successful. It's set up to fail. The idea that you can take a child out of his home environment, out of his school environment, and bring him to a clinic that is completely different, with different adults, different um, environmental conditions, and teach that child the skills he'll need to live each and every moment of his day in a period of two hours, two times a week, or three or four times a week, is, is ridiculous. It's impossible. It will not work. It does not work. That is why people say, who do this type of therapy, say, children with autism cannot recover. You should have low expectations. Don't be in denial. Your child will always have severe, uh, severe developmental delays, will always be mentally retarded, and you're not going to be able to make a major difference. We're going to make minor changes, and you should love your child for who they are. Well, that's because the system is set up to fail that way. What you need to do is you need to get your child in a situation where every day, every minute, every interaction he has with his environment is motivating and reinforcing better choices and is extinguishing, blocking off reinforcement for the inappropriate choices. And the only way to do that is to take the therapy from the institute, bring it back into the home, into the school, and teach the adults who are already in the child's environment how to give that on a minute-to-minute -minute basis, 24 hours a day. If I can teach mom and dad how to be ABA therapists in addition to being good parents, you don't have to, be one, you don't have to quit being one to be the other, but if I can teach them how to understand the principles of behavior and apply them when they're um, trying to get their shoes on their child or when they're trying to get their child to take a bath or brush their child's teeth or when they're in the grocery store and to be able to handle your child's um, behavioral issues at those times with good sound practice and it happens all day every day, well, you're going to have um, a child who actually can make incredible progress. Not always. Sometimes it's very difficult but you're going to have a better chance of meeting your child's potential. Um, and I think that's, that's why you, we uh, focus all of our, our main focus on teaching the parents, number one. And, and, and another main purpose for that is no one is going to be there in that child's life for the rest of their life except for their parents. And if the parents don't understand how to do it for themselves, they're always going to be reliant on other people. And those other people may not always be there. And the funds for those other people to keep teaching may not always be there. At some point the child's going to be 18 or 21 um, and may or may not have developed the skills to live independently. Well then mom and dad are going to be left with nothing if they know now what they knew when the child was three. So by turning the parents into um, accomplished um, people who understand the principles of behavior and can apply them through their day, um, you, we are seeing greater um, result than we ever have seen before. Thank you. And being the parents, number one, do you have any suggestions for number two, the therapist? Like, what are the characteristics that we should uh, look for? In, uh, in, a, in a therapist to help mm -hmm. you in the home? Mm 